Good afternoon and welcome to Midday News. I'm Milton Walker. Special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. The Chief Executive Officer at the Firearm Licensing Authority, the FLA, Shane Dallin, said monthly applications for firearms have dropped drastically. He said the declining numbers coincide with efforts to rid the authority of corrupt practices. Previously, over 600 monthly applications would come to the authority, but now there's an average of 300 there are an average of 300 applications per month. Getting firearms, so the enticement and the encouragement was there for, the, for them to apply because it was likely that they would have, would have um, been granted a license. That um, has slowed because the message is quite clear that the systems in place now are more robust to prevent that from happening. In the meantime, Jamaica Labour Party Senator Charles Sinclair has thrown his support behind the FLA CEO Shane Dallin. Mr. Dallin has been accused of cronizing by former National Security Minister Peter Bunting. However, Mr. Sinclair, who was speaking on Sunday at the Southern St. James Constituency Conference, urged Dallin to ignore the naysayers and continue his work to clean up the FLA. If you are not the spokesman on national security, in their party. Why is it you talking so much? But understand me, when I consider those things and I analyze it for myself, I something he more have to hide. Well, I say to the CEO of the Firearm Licensing Authority, continue to do your work because you do it in the best interest of the people of Jamaica. Concern is being raised about the lack of response from the St. Anne's Bay Hospital following Sunday's crash on the prior main road in the parish. Officials from the Jamaica Fire Brigade told TVJ News that they made several calls to the hospital for assistance which went unanswered. They argue it's not the first time this has happened. In the meantime, the opposite hospital responded saying the claim is not true. TVJ Shamela Pullen reports. Siren blazing, minutes after five Sunday afternoon, the scene at the section of the Priory Main Road in St. Anne. Several persons were injured following a two-vehicle crash. Thirteen persons were transported to the St. Anne's Bay Hospital. The St. Anne's Bay Fire Brigade was called to the scene. Assistant Superintendent at the St. Anne's Bay Fire Station, Carol Wilmot, says she and her team responded. On arrival at the, on, at the um, location, which was Richmond in Priory, St. Saint, Saint Anne, at high, Toyota Highest minibus was, was seen overturned with, and a uh, Toyota Succeed motor car was seen some distance away. Immediately the firefighters got into operation. A number of casualties were on the ground. Some of them were... Um, seem immobile, however, all were responsive. Dr. Donald Rod, who was early on the scene, he got into action and started tri with triaging um, the casualties. Assistant Superintendent Wilmot claims they tried to call the St. Anne's Bay Hospital for help, but were unsuccessful. It is a depressing um, situation for us, the non-response from the St. Anne's Bay Hospital. Because, you know, um, our duty is to save lives. And the longer it takes for us to get our casualties off to a medical facility, it, um, it is the less of the chance of survival or the greater the impact um, of whatever injuries they may have suffered. And this has been happening for over some time now. And we really would like for that to be addressed. Two private ambulances later came to the scene to assist. There was a lot of mechanical injuries, not a lot of bleeding, but the mechanical injuries and the close body injuries are the worst one because internal bleeding could be a foot. There were some head injuries, um, loss of consciousness, back injuries, and of course, thank God we had our spine boards to be able to move them and move them safely to the St. Anne's Bay Hospital. When TVJ News contacted the management at the hospital, we were told that no one from the fire department contacted them about the matter. Shamela Pullen, TVJ News. 
Residents who travel along the Tombstone to Luana Roadway in St. Elizabeth are appealing to the government to fix the potholes in the area, which are posing a serious problem to road users. Residents told TVJ News that with the persistent rainfall over the last months, the potholes have increased in size and depth. Taxi operators who applied a new market to Santa Cruz route complained that the potholes are impacting their livelihood. But all the wicked man. When when you when you go down, who we'll come up over on the right hand side then you have to, you have to cash us down there. Mm -hmm. Terrible man, you wanna fix. And you the right on the corner. Right on the corner then. You mount that tire where bus up around there. The tire like a nothing. Yeah, I tell you. So you use it you're so every day, so how dangerous Every day, man. You're wicked, man. You're terrible, man. Front end lick up. All night bamboo, terrible too. Everywhere. Like over, I go straight down. Bus tire and that, the patrol already on my bus. I want to tire cars 13,000 odd. And right now, we there. The whole of we as taxi man run there. And we don't know who to talk to. We don't know who to go to. Who to represent. About this patrol there, New Holland, coming at the gas station there. Meanwhile, Councillor for the Lakovia Division, George Powell, said that he's been appealing to the National Works Agency, the NWA, to fix the road, but to no avail. I would really love to see something done because it, a lot of persons' cars have been damaged and the Works Agency need now to do something in the short term because it cannot continue like that. The St. James Public Health Department says it will be increasing its vigilance over the Christmas holidays as it seeks to prevent an increase of unhygienic food practices. The Health Department says during this period, there's generally an increase in predial larceny and an increase in the sale of food. The details from TVJ's O'Shane Masters. Get your business in order. That's a stance which is being taken by the St. James Health Department. The warning as the department says it will be more closely monitoring persons who sell in and around the second city. According to Chief Public Health Inspector for St. James, Lennox Wallace, the initiative being taken by the health department is vital at this time. He is also urging event organizers to have consultations with the health department. After a night of enjoyment, the hospital is not full with persons suffering from foodborne illnesses. We want to ensure that a day or two, Type 5 Health Center is not overcrowded with persons who would have consumed and would have ended up there. And instead of looking forward to next year, we would have been in court with these same promoters. Increased vigilance will also be taken as it relates to the inspection of meats. This, as a pretty larceny unit, has reported an increase in the theft of animals for meat. We know what will increase at this time of the year as well. Pretty larceny, pretty larceny. Meats coming in to various facilities, meat shops, etc., that is uninspected and unstamped. The public health department is not here to just to take it to court for the one million dollar fine. We want to ensure if you comply, that is your profit. But despite those concerns, the chief health inspector is reporting a high compliance rate with food establishments in the parish. As far as our tourist establishments are concerned, we are 95% in compliant. And the 5% is really not because we have closed them, but license would have expired. Other food establishments, supermarkets, wholesale, grocery shops, we are about 82% in compliance. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. Meanwhile, the St. James Health Department says it will continue its clampdown on food establishments which are found in breach of food safety regulations. The last quarter, July to September, we would have closed 27 food and establishments. This week alone, we would have closed three, two in the city here and one in Anchovy, St. James. However, he noted that two of those establishments were reopened recently. Mr. Wallace was speaking at a multi-agency media briefing called by the St. James Municipal Corporation on Friday. 
Fisherfolk of the Rocky Point Fishing Village in Clarendon are appealing for help to locate two fishermen who they say have disappeared since last Tuesday. The missing fishermen have been identified as 24-year-old Leon Elliott, also known as Nazi, and 29-year-old Richard Thompson, both of Rocky Point. The fisher folk say the men went to sea early Tuesday morning, heading for a location known as Rock, but they never returned. I know the person will come and tell me, say, as burn, get the call. So but he said, why never send him to me? Check. So when me come to the beach, I'll come and see my son. But when me go back up in the night, he come back and say, Natasha, you know, say, from man in my ear, say, Nazi left off his Iraq. And you know, come along. So me have to tell you, I jump up out of my bed and take back a taxi, reach back a Rocky. The mother of one of the missing fishermen, Natasha Nod, told TVJ News that the owner of the boat launched a search for the missing fishermen. However, the search was unsuccessful. The fisher folk argue that the Jamaica Defence Force Coast Guard is not doing enough to locate the fishermen. Jamaican Coast Guard, if they know about no cook, now nothing, they don't move. They're not searching nobody. You understand me? They have all, the only thing they get boat for doing you know, is run long jugs boat. Nothing else. You understand me? Mr. Andrew Oldness, you the Prime Minister, sir. I need to talk to them. And when they're fishermen, when they're fishermen, they are see the Coast Guard will go, they're going to look for them. Knowing that from Wednesday, leave the rock to come home and all know we can't find him. Why the boss man don't want his name to call on the media? He is responsible for everything. Even though they shouldn't have leave the rock and come, but we want help. We need help to find them. They are somebody's child and we need help. From Wednesday till now, we need captor. We send boat, them send boat. But what? Nobody traveling where the current going. Everybody traveling one place in Andy Bank. We need help. A member of the first cohort of young leaders of the Americas Initiative is seeking to help change the lives of young people in Jamaica. Tashona Mullings said the life-changing advice she got from her meetings and discussions with world leaders, such as former American President Barack Obama, has prompted her to help her fellow youth. Using her Next Step Lifelong Educational Services program, she will start with young people in St. Thomas by coaching them on how to become better employees. According to local employers, young people do not have the necessary life skills to get up, and, uh, to get and keep a job. So that's why we aim to start a wave that will positively impact and change this statistic. In sports, the West Indies crashed to a heavy 224-run defeat to India in today's fourth and penultimate one-day international in Mumbai. Chasing a massive 378 to win, the Windies were skittled out for a paltry 153 runs. Only skipper Jason Holder with an unbeaten 54 scored a half century. The next best scorer was all-rounder Kimo Paul with 19. Khalil Ahmed with 3 for 13 and Kuldeep Yadav 3 for 42 were the main wicket takers for the Indians who now lead the series 2-1. Earlier, India, who won the toss, posted a challenging 377 for five, thanks to centuries from Rohit Sharma with 162 and Ambati Rayadu with 100. Kimar Roach ended with two for 72 for the Caribbean side. The Wind Windies must now win Thursday's fifth and final match to level the series at two hall. The second match ended in a tie. And that's Midday News. I'm Milton Walker. Join us at 7 for primetime news on behalf of the news, sports and production teams. Good afternoon.